Hey everyone, it's me Lone. I hope you're doing okay. Let's talk about the year that Bethesda is about to have in 2023. I know you've probably seen a similar video to this from the likes of Maddie and also Juicehead, but I do want to throw my hat into the mix because I am so excited and also invested in the year that Bethesda is about to have this year. And that's not just because Bethesda Game Studios is releasing Starfield. It's a big reason, of course, but it's not the only reason. We have Arcane Studios releasing Redfall. We are getting a Fall i4 next gen update. We potentially might be getting a Skyrim Marketplace update. And even though this is technically Amazon, we might be seeing more of the Fallout TV show from them. So with all this Bethesda stuff happening, I'm just getting hyped. Like as a Bethesda fan, as you know, we've had a fairly quiet past couple of years, especially compared to previous years, that it's just f f fun, it's exciting, it's getting me excited to see a year with all these things finally falling into place and releasing and getting into our hands. Like, can you feel the, the excitement in the air? Because I sure can, and I just want to talk about it in this video. I just want to be a little bit of a fanboy for a bit in this video. I know I've done some, some more critical videos, or at least expressed criticism in videos in, in the past couple, but I just want to be positive for a second, okay? I'll try and be fair where I need to be fair, but I just want to be a fanboy once more. So if you enjoyed this video, please, I only have one favor to ask of you. If you could go to the description below, also to the pinned comment, there I've left, left a link to my Discord channel. If you could please go to the link, click it, join the Discord, I would really appreciate it. We're trying to revive the Discord to make it a one-stop shop to talk about everything in Bethesda, again, particularly because of this year, but I'm also trying to get the Discord partnered. So if you could please join the Discord, I would really appreciate it. And I hope to chat to all of you there that do happen to join. So let's start off with talking about Redfall. By the way, I don't have a script. I'm just gonna freaking go. I don't care, I wanna ramble and, and let's see how that goes. But let's talk about Redfall, okay? I've said that I'm quietly confident for Redfall. I know that Redfall to date has not set the world on fire entirely, especially when it comes to its marketing, okay? But we are about to get a bunch more information about that game at this month's Developer Direct on January 25. We're gonna be getting, as it said in the article, you know, more info about the combat, the customization, importantly, the release date. We're about to see so much more of Redfall and hopefully see Xbox and Bethesda up their game when it comes to the marketing of this game that I'm getting seriously excited for Redfall and I'm interested to see what Arcane Studios is going to be bringing to the table. That This is the thing that I really want to stress and emphasize in this video when it comes to Redfall. This is Arcane Studios we're talking about. Of course, they're now split in terms of development. We had Arcane Leon release Deathloop. I was also a serious fan of Deathloop. And of course, you have uh, Arcane Austin now releasing Redfall. So they do split their time like that, but they're still the one studio and Arcane Studios as a whole has some serious chops. They are one of my most respected and beloved studios. Yes, partly because they're under Bethesda, but I, I seriously have loved their games in the past. We're talking about games like Dishonored, like Prey. I know some of you didn't like Deathloop, but I genuinely thought Deathloop was incredibly innovative. They are not just some random studio. This is Arcane Studios. I, I think they're, they're one of the greatest studios at what they do in the world, especially at developing Sims. And I know they're trying something different with Redfall, but I have confidence in them. They delayed the game, but they did it for a reason. They want to get it right. I have confidence that they can deliver a game that is fun. Is it going to make game of the year? Is it going to get a bunch of nominations? I can't say for sure. But so long as it comes out in a decent state, it's a game that's fun. With vampires, you get the shoot. You keep wanting to come back to the game. It gets the setting, the world, the tone right. I think it's it's going to be successful. I think that's all it that really needs to be successful. The counter to that, of course, is that this is going to be Xbox's first exclusive from Bethesda since the acquisition. So all eyes really are going to be on Redfall as a result. And I think people are probably going to, especially PlayStation fanboys in particular, are probably going to be more critical to Redfall as a result. They're going to be comparing the game to the likes of God of War, to the likes of uh, Horizon, Last of Us, etc. Even though the comparisons aren't entirely fair, people are going to be doing that anyways because they're exclusives. That, that's what fanboy wars do. I, and, and I hate it, but that's the reality, right? So I know that the game's probably going to receive more criticism as a result, probably a couple of review bombings. But even given that aside, I have faith in Arcane Studios, in Arcane Austin in particular. I think from what I've seen so far, it looks good. Some people have said that, yeah, it's just a reskin or just a clone of Back for Blood and Left for Dead. They've come out and said that it's not, that it's more like Far Cry. 
I'm excited to see what they have to bring to the table when it comes to Redfall. So let's move on to talk about Fallout 4 Next Gen. I, I, I'm so hyped for Fallout 4 Next Gen. I'm actually playing Fallout 4 again to get ready for Fallout 4 Next Gen. It might sound stupid, like, why are you playing Fallout 4 now when the Next Gen update's gonna come for this, gonna come this year, later this year? I know, I know that it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but I'm just playing it just to get used to the game again, to familiarize myself with the game again, and in particular, to get ready to make a bunch of videos and guides for the game when the update does come out. So to kind of catch you all up, free Fallout 4 Next Gen update coming sometime this year. We don't know. We don't know whether it's before or after Starfield. We can only speculate about that. But the free update is going to have, you know, improvements to the textures and graphics. It's going to have improvements in particular to the frame rate, which is an important one. I'll, I'll, I'll mention why in a second. It's going to have bug fixes and it's also going to have new Creation Club content. Some people might not be hyped about that, but I'm interested to see what they have to, to bring to the table when it comes to that new Creation Club content. I... The reason why I'm so excited for this game is because by playing Fallout 4 recently, I've realized how much I actually do love that game. And it might not be a surprise to some of you because I've been such a staunch defender of Fallout 4. I've said Fallout 4 is a really, really solid game. I understand, I understand the, the line that everyone on the, on the internet uses, right? When they say that Fallout 4 is a good game, but it's not a good Fallout game. I can understand where people are coming from when they say that. And in particular, those arguments tend to come from like the online Fallout community that engage in those discussions. And, and rightly so. It's, it's something that I, I even enjoy doing as well. So I can understand those criticisms. But the key is, it's still a good game, okay? And, and I am really enjoying my playthrough of Fallout 4 this time around. Yes, the, the writing and the, and the story isn't its strong points, but when it comes to just the exploration, the world, I still think it looks beautiful. It can, ha you know, stand to have some improvements. I still think it looks great. It does need some bug fixes, but I, I'm having such a great time and I'm realizing why I loved Fallout 4 in the first place. And I think people, I keep needing to mention this every time I talk about Fallout 4. It's such a big title, bigger than I think many people appreciate. It sold tens of millions of copies. It is huge. We're not just talking about the online Fallout community that still talk about Fallout games to this day. We're talking about such a wider audience of people and wider group of gamers that were introduced to the world of Fallout and to the franchise of Fallout in the first place thanks to Fallout 4. That's the game that many people purchased period when it comes to any Fallout game and it's very much beloved amongst that audience in particular. You go to Steam, you go to Xbox, you go to anywhere that where you can see reviews or ratings for Fallout 4, it tends to always be at minimum four or mostly positive. It is an incredibly beloved game. I know it's divisive for some people and a lot of people don't like it, but I love it and many people do, so I'm so hyped to see this next gen update. I'm seriously excited for what they had to bring to the table. There's a few things that I do think Bethesda need to do, and I might make a separate video about this, but the frame rate update is obviously a huge benefit and it's something that's hugely needed. Not being able to play above 60 frames per second because the physics just go crazy and, and your movement's super, super fast. That obviously shouldn't have been an issue in the first place, but finally it's getting fixed and that's great. There's other bug fixes that I would like to see fixed as well. In particular, like whenever you change, like sometimes you change settings in the graphics settings menu and it doesn't reflect. I think God Rays needs fixing. I always disable those because I don't think they look good. There's a few things, few other bugs that need to be addressed. And yes, they're doing bug fixes. We don't know what kind of bug fixes, but I might make a separate video that lists the big things that I just want to see fixed with it. Because if they do fix all those things and because it's free, I think Fallout 4 is going to have a nice little mini resurgence or even a big resurgence this year thanks to the next gen update. So let's see what Bethesda Game Studios have to bring to the table. But now let's talk about Fallout 76. I just made a, a pretty, I wouldn't say it was a scathing video. I thought I was very fair in my last video of Fallout 76 where I talked about my concern for the game moving forward. My main issue when it came, not issue, my main concern for the game was because of Starfield, Fallout 4 Next Gen, all this other stuff coming with Bethesda this year. My main concern was that the, the player base would become seriously divided because everyone's attention is going to be split between those games, even including Redfall to some sm smaller extent. I was worried the player base is going to be taking a hit this year, and I still think it will. I think that is a genuine risk, and I stand by that comment. When people are going to see Starfield come, Bethesda Game Studios' is first proper first player, you know, RPG in seven years or over seven years, when they see Fallout 4 next gen, I do think the player base for Fallout 76 is going to take a hit. That being said, in that video, even though I was more on the critical side, I did praise Nuka World on tour, right? 
I hadn't played it, but I did my research and I saw what people had been saying about that. And essentially that update provided everything, everything that long-term endgame players had been asking for. New region boss, new new events. It brought a lot of that stuff to the table without the serious grind that something like The Pit brought, right? I was highly positive about Nuka World on Tour as a result of that. And all they do need to do is just to bring more of that content. And I think now that Double Eleven has, seems to have found their footing, they can have a nice year this year. Do I think it's going to set the world on fire? Probably not. But all they need to do is keep the core fan base happy, keep them coming back to the game, even if it's a bit more infrequently, even if it's like once a week instead of two, three times a week on average. I still think that's okay. And then once people uh, are done playing Starfield, at least their first playthrough or, or Fallout 4, you might have more people go back to Fallout 76. So I am interested. I'm going to keep an eye on what Bethesda Game Studios and also, of course, Double Eleven bring to the table when it comes to 76 this year. They just need to keep doing more like Nuka Ward on tour and less like the pit. But next up, we got the Skyrim Marketplace update, something that is not confirmed, but it's potentially coming. I'm definitely making a separate video about this because people are going to see this as Paid Mods 2.0 coming back. And I, I think there are some concerns to talk about, but it's nice to see Skyrim getting another update. I'm just going to say it. I love Skyrim. Many of you love Skyrim. People keep buying Skyrim. So why? will not get another update from Skyrim. So long as it's not, release, not another release on another platform, I, I get the memes and the jokes about that, but I think it could just be nice to see mod authors, because this is the whole plan of it. It's, it's potentially going to be a marketplace where modders can release and sell some of their creations and mods. It's going to be nice to see mod authors get some compensation. And I want to make a video about this. As I said, I think they deserve to as, as, as much as YouTubers do, they deserve to get as many of those revenue sources as possible, right? If we can see this marketplace nail it, especially in terms of the split that they receive and how expensive these creations are, that's going to be big, then I think we've got something nice on our hands. Yes, it's going to be divisive. Yes, people are going to instantly hate it just for the reason that it's paid mods. But I'm interested to see what Bethesda has to bring to the table when it comes to the Skyrim marketplace. But finally, Let's talk about Starfield, okay? As I, as I mentioned before, this is Bethesda Game Studios' first proper single-player RPG in over seven years. It's also their first new IP in a very long time, something that Todd has said has been in the making or been in, in his mind anyways for 25 years, okay? I am so hyped for Starfield. I, and I want to I wanna share something more personal with you, all right? One of the big reasons why I left Bethesda was so I could enjoy Starfield as a fan. I, it, it was a big factor and, and everything that I've done with my YouTube channel, all the news coverage that I've done, the discussions that I've done, it backs that up. I just wanted to enjoy this game as a fan because it looks, for me, incredible. I, I seriously think BGS are going to hit, bring everything to the table when it comes to Starfield in, in terms of you know, the dialogue, them talking about choices and consequences. And like, they're actually seem seemingly serious about it, right? All the customization options when it comes to char character building. There looks to be a lot of depth in there that RPG lovers, I think, are going to love. Everything with the spaceship and, and, and spaceship combat and building out your spaceship. I'm excited to hear more about the companions. I think Starfield is going to be huge. Even, even people that just like Fallout New Vegas or the more kind of traditional styles of RPG game, I think Starfield's going to hit a home run here. Genuinely, I do. And I cannot wait to make a bunch of videos on it. I cannot wait to just play it and enjoy it as a fan. And it's, it's, ah, oh, I just want to know the release date. That is, that is the big thing here. And we still need to know a lot about the game, but I'm just excited. I'm hyped for Starfield. So let me know your thoughts about everything that I've talked about in today's video. I know I didn't have a script. I don't care. I just wanted to waffle and ramble about everything that I'm excited for from Bethesda this year. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, Way Sanders. And until next time, this has been Lone. Please take care of yourselves. And would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.